So this chapter is about matter and energy. We've talked about the matter. Now we're going to talk about energy. So energy is a major component of our, use, our universe. There is matter and there is energy. Energy is not matter, although energy does matter. Um, we define energy as the capacity to do work. We use the idea of work in our everyday lives, but in science we have a specific definition. Work is the result of a force acting on a distance. So if I take my clipboard here and I push it across the bench, I applied a force across a distance I did work. If I pick up my keys, I'm applying a force to lift them against the force of gravity and I have done work. If I let go of them, I am not doing any work. The force of gravity would be doing work on the keys, but not me. The behavior of matter is driven by energy. The reason that the butane in that lighter will react with oxygen is because of changes in energy. And so we need to understand energy in order to understand chemistry. We talked about conservation of matter, of mass. There is also conservation of energy. In a chemical reaction, energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's conserved. So the total amount of energy is constant. You cannot create energy. But you can change energy from one form to another. You can change it from a less useful form into a more useful form. We have solar panels on our house. I wish I could get all the telemarketers to realize that so they try stop trying to sell us more solar panels. I don't think it helps if you stack another layer on top. <laughs> the sun beats down upon us most of the year. There is energy in the sunlight. It's not all that useful to us, though, right? I can't just show my cell phone to the sunlight and have it get powered up so that I can call someone. But if I use solar panels, I can convert that light energy into electrical energy, and then it's more useful to me. Energy can also be transferred from one object to another. You can't create energy. You also cannot destroy energy. So if it seems like you've lost energy, you just need to look harder because it went somewhere. It doesn't just disappear. There are different types of energy. The most important ones to be familiar with are the two broadest categories, kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy has to do with motion. If, an, if matter is in motion, it has kinetic energy. My boys play football. If, so there was one play and this ref was, I don't know what he was doing. He's standing there and he did not get out of the way and he just got plowed into by a lineman. That was a moving body of matter. Was there energy in that? Yeah, there's enough energy to knock the ref on his backside, right? Energy of motion. And then there is potential energy. That is energy that's associated either with position or with composition. Why do we put gasoline into the tanks of our cars? so that the car can use it and, and make motion, right? The car moving is kinetic energy. Inside the gasoline is potential energy due to the composition of the atoms in the gasoline. That's also called chemical energy. We can have a combustion reaction and convert that chemical potential energy into kinetic energy of the car. The conversion, though, is not 100% efficient. What happens to the temperature of the engine of your car as you run it? It goes up. It heats up. Heat is also a form of energy. The reason the engine heats up is not because the manufacturer wants it to. It's a byproduct of turning that potential energy into kinetic energy. We say it's lost as heat energy. It, it didn't actually disappear, but it was converted into some heat energy, and the heat energy was not useful to us, and so it just escaped into the atmosphere. 
So kinetic energy is movement, potential energy, position, or composition. So electricity, we're familiar with that, right? We charge our phones every night. Electrical energy is energy associated with the flow of electrical charge. It's the movement of electrons. Is that potential or kinetic? Electrons moving. Electrical energy is, is a form of kinetic energy. Thermal energy is the energy associated with the random motions of atoms and molecules in matter. Motion of atoms and molecules. Is that kinetic or potential? Kinetic. Chemical energy is a form of potential energy associated with the positions of the particles in a chemical system. The total energy that any sample of matter has is the sum of its potential and its kinetic energy. It may have both. In fact, it probably does. So the total energy is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. If we think about a reservoir where we have water held back by a dam, here the water is being held back. It has high potential energy. If we remove that dam or make an opening in it, that water is going to go down. That's like holding something. What, what do I not mind dropping? I'll drop my Sharpie. If, if I hold my Sharpie up, it has potential energy. If it's down on the ground, it has less potential energy. Up here, it's got more potential energy. If I let go of it, what's going to happen? It's going to fall. Yep, every time. <laughs> Better pick it up now or I'll leave it there. Those things disappear all over the place. Um, when it was falling, it had kinetic energy, right? As the, that's, I can't use the mouse on here. Okay, as something is falling, what happens to its speed? It gets faster, right? What happens to its potential energy as it gets lower and lower? It goes down. The potential energy decreases, the kinetic energy increases. So as an object is falling, the potential energy is being turned into kinetic energy. What happens to all that energy when the Sharpie marker hits the floor? It goes somewhere else. It, it, it has to be in some form. It actually gets dissipated as heat. When two objects collide with each other, the, the energy of that collision is often dissipated as heat. You, not, you may not be able to sense that with your, hand, with your senses, but it does do that. So a hydroelectric facility takes this high potential energy of the water behind the dam and converts that to kinetic energy as it escapes and turns the turbines. And we can take that kinetic energy of turning the turbines and change it into electrical energy, which is then very useful to us. If you're interested in energy, physics would be a good thing to study. They, they talk a lot more about it. Well, energy is something that can be measured, like mass. And so we have to have some units for it. Uh, so here are some of the common units of energy. The joule, that's a lowercase j. This font doesn't make it look much like a j. Joule, the abbreviation is a capital J. Um, that's the SI unit or the metric unit of energy. A calorie with a lowercase c, abbreviated C-A-L. That is also a unit of energy. You're probably familiar with that word. Um, a calorie can be defined as the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. If you have a gram of water and you want to raise it from 25 to 26 degrees Celsius, you're going to have to put some energy into it. That amount of energy would be one, cal <clears throat> one calorie. The calorie you're familiar with is actually um, a calorie with a capital C, also called a nutritional calorie. And that's equivalent to 1,000 of the regular calories. So you'll sometimes see this nutritional calorie with the capital C. A better way to describe it, though, is it's really a kilocalorie. 
The prefix kilo means a thousand, right? Ten to the third. A kilocalorie is a thousand regular calories. The electric company, PG&E, measures energy in kilowatt hours. Here's a, a table relating the different energy uh, units. And so we've learned how to do dimensional analysis and convert units. Here's just a few more conversions. Let's do an example here. The complete combustion of a small wooden match produces approximately 512 calories of heat. How many kilojoules are produced? Well, um, sometimes it's helpful to identify the question first. So what unit are we trying to find? Kilojoules. So that's KJ. And what unit are we given? Calories. That's a lowercase c-a-l. Well, we need some relationship here. So let's go back to the table and see what we've got. Um, here we've got calories to joules, um, but there's nothing in here specifically about kilojoules. The metric prefixes work the same on any unit that you want to use them on. So kilojoules works just the same as kilometers or kiloliters or anything else. But we need this guy right here. One calorie is 4.184 joules. One calorie equals 4.184 joules. Well, that would allow us to convert from calories to joules. But that's not going to get us all the way to kilojoules. Joules to kilojoules, we're just going to use our knowledge of the metric prefixes. Any questions? So 512 calories. I look at my path. I have two arrows. I'm going to have two conversion factors, two fractions. Calories to joules to kilojoules, calories to joules to kilojoules. The unit before goes in the bottom because we want calories to disappear, cancel out. And I'm going to put joules down here because I want joules to cancel out. Then I need numbers. Well, this is what I looked up for the relationship between calories and joules. So 4.184 joules. In this problem, that's on the top of the fraction. 4.184 joules is equal to one calorie. The top has to equal the bottom. And then when I get to this one, here I've got kilojoule in joule. The prefix kilo is in the top. I want to write what it means on the other side so that they're equal. Kilo means 10 to the third. One kilojoule is one times 10 to the third joules. And then I'm going to use my calculator. Multiply by the top of the fraction, divide by the bottom. You can ignore the ones. 512 times 4.184 divided by that 1 times 10 to the third, you enter as 1 EE3 equals. And my calculator is showing me 2.14. 2208. That would be kilojoules. Anybody else? Get that number? Thank you. If you got a number that was a lot larger, you're probably having a scientific notation issue when you're dividing there. Please come and talk to me. We can straighten that out very easily. What about significant figures? Three. We're starting with three here. This conversion, is that exact? You know, off the top of my head, I don't even know. How sad is that? There's nothing, there's no clue given in there. This one's exact. Does it matter for this problem whether this one's exact? No, because if it wasn't, that would have four, and this would have three. Three still wins, and so 
we make a note, maybe we should look up whether that one's exact. I need, but for future reference, yeah, we should look that up. I don't know why in all these years it's never occurred to me. That's one that definitely could be exact. I just, I'm not willing to say that on YouTube. Any questions?